Hey everybody, it's me Stacy here at Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com and this is our next Saturday with Stacy, YouTube class number 447. Welcome, welcome to all of you who are a regular with me every week and welcome to all of you who are new to our channel. You will find that I release a YouTube class every Saturday morning, 8 a.m. sunny California time, 10 central, 11 eastern, and about 4 p.m. in the United Kingdom. And during the premiere of that class, we are live chatting. So if you see a live chat going on over here, well, you are here for the premiere of the class. My classes are always technique based and bring not only the latest and greatest from the crafting community, but we also try to incorporate things you might already have in your crafty arsenal. Now this week, well, this week I've got Simply Defined, but before I get there, uh, some announcements to make, so let's go through all of that. By the time you are watching this, the first half of the SMS warehouse sale is over. I hope you had a good time flipping through all of those pages, looking at all of that product that was discounted up to 90% off. Wow. Now the, you've done your part. Now it turns to us and we start working on our end. And just remember it is a ships when it ships sale. I will leave the video up. So in case you need a reminder, you can always go back and watch it. It'll be on our website. And I just hope you got some amazing deals and you found things that made your heart happy that perhaps you wouldn't have been able to afford any other way. Part two of our sale will come after we're finished shipping this first sale. We have, we're thinking that, that the second half of this sale will be in October. So that'll give you an idea of how long we're estimating it will take to ship everybody's orders. Now, if it takes a little longer, it takes a little longer. And if we get done sooner, we get done sooner. But it is a ships when it ships sale. The second half of the sale is as spectacular as the first. And we had to cut it into two just because there's we're such a small staff right now to try and even manage of uh, just doing it all in one big sale it would have been overwhelming for us so thank you for understanding and i think for some of you it's working out well that we split it into two right wahoo could chew now what else do i have to say okay so youtube classes or youtube shipments we should have been working on youtube number we should be actually we should be almost we should have been almost done with youtube number 242 moving on to two no 242 442 moving on to 443 now youtube 442 had the empty alcohol the empty markers from couture creations his alcohol ink markers and i bought them empty to show you how to use them with some of the inks you already have it was wow that product is stuck. It's stuck and it hasn't moved for almost two, almost, almost 10 days. It has not moved 10 days, 12 days. It's been, it's been a while since that product has moved. So we are working with Couture Creations to track it, trace it, get it here as quickly as we can. But that means that YouTube number 442 is going to have to sit here for a little bit longer. So we're moving on to 443 and that means you will probably get your order 443 before you see 442. We just don't want you to be concerned. We also may start 444. I don't know because I don't know how long it's going to take to get those markers unstuck. And they're empty markers. They're empty markers. So just don't be surprised if you see some of your newer orders shipping before that 442 order. Once those markers get here, we'll start processing those orders. But because we take the entire week up in a batch, we don't just pull out the orders that don't, you know, that, that don't have any markers on it. We take the entire week up that everybody's orders kind of on hold until we get all the product in. So if you're 443, Wahoo Kachu, look for an update soon. You'll get an update saying your order is awaiting fulfillment and then another email letting you know when it's been quality controlled saying it's awaiting shipment and then a last email letting you know it is out the door so look for those soon also the switch machines we are still waiting on white switch machines we're on a hold pattern with white switch machines but we got an allocation of black switch machines a larger allocation than we had anticipated so we were able to call I think almost everybody who had a white machine, everybody that we could get through to who had a white machine and offer them a black machine. 
and those machines are currently shipping out right now. If you had a black machine on reserve, your order says reserve, that order has also been pulled and will be shipping out shortly because we have the black machines ready to go. We still have black machines available, so I think that we'll go ahead and we'll relist them and show you what we are or put more into inventory online and if you would like a Tim Holtz switch black machine for $169.99 plus shipping you can buy it we'll put them back on because I have a few more allocated to me that we can sell after we had called everybody and asked them if they wanted to make a switch from a white to a black we are anticipating the white machines to be sometime in May to get them allocated to us so we can start shipping again. And as soon as I have more information, I will give you more information. Um, what else? Hmm. Okay, how about, how about some good news, okay? <laughs> well, I think the switch machines, for the people who want the Tim Holtz switch machines, it's a woohoo. For the people who are still waiting on their white switch machines, it's like, hmm. But, you know, it, it is what it is, and Ellison's doing their very, very best to get everything in and quality controlled and shipped out or, or released to us so they can ship for us. Um, and Ozzy Andrew's working his magic to try and get our packages unstuck. How do they get stuck? I just don't know, but they just, they're sitting there. They haven't moved in two weeks. They haven't moved. It's like, move. <laughs> okay, good news. So typically we have a expedited sale every Friday. Usually it's Sizzix and then Spellbinders and then Stampendous and then, uh, and then uh, uh, last month we had two Spellbinders where if you place your order, on uh, on a Friday for a very specific product and you only order from that category your order will expedite out <laughs> the the Ellison elves and the spellbinders and stampenda superstars they do all the bundling for us it comes in pre bundled it's amazing well we didn't have one last Friday because well the warehouse sale started so and expedited orders are handled downstairs it doesn't affect regular YouTube orders. Those are handled upstairs. We try to, because the store is slow, our retail store is slow because we're not open on the weekends, the girls downstairs, we all pitch in and we we pull your expedited orders. SMS girl Renee and SMS girl Claire and SMS girl Elena and SMS guy James and Michael, they QC them and then we send them up for shipping. So we handle that downstairs. But because we didn't have that sale last week because we had the warehouse sale, and I have all the product that I'm showing you today. The SMS staff downstairs doesn't know I'm going to do this. <laughs> We're going to expedite these orders. It won't be, I can't guarantee you it will be in, in the exact same time frame as our Friday expedited, but we're certainly going to try because we do have all the product. So if you place your order from Scrapbooking Made Simple and you go to the YouTube Yummies category, and you only order items that are in that category for this YouTube. We'll start processing and shipping those orders the following Monday. So you're watching this on Saturday. If you're watching the premiere, we won't start Monday morning. We'll start the following Monday. So a week to be a week. That way we can print the orders and get them all ready. And we'll start shipping and filling a week away. Now, <laughs> Again, it has to only be things that are in the YouTube Yummies category. If you order something outside of that category, not a problem. It just will ship in our standard shipping time frame, which right now is about 30 to 45 days. That's about our standard shipping time frame right now. If you want to do a pay later, absolutely. You can pay later, but your order will ship in that standard shipping time frame. If you want to do a pay later and call us, bring, 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 hello, I'd like to pay for my order so it can expedite. Absolutely. You just have to have that payment into us by Friday. So if you're watching this on the, the premiere day, Saturday, you have to have it into us by Friday. And once we have that payment, they'll switch your order over to payment received and it will qualify for expedited shipping. So since we didn't have one last week and downstairs, well, <laughs> gotta keep busy right and since all this product is already sitting here I thought well 
We can try and make it up to you and, and expedite out these orders, especially since the dies are for 4th of July or patriotic. All right, so that's my news. Um, warehouse sale is over. Uh, YouTube 442, we have to wait for those empty markers to get here. We're going to start YouTube 443 for you this week. Well, yeah, Monday we'll start 443. And expedited shipping on this YouTube class only if your order is paid for and you don't order anything else from any other category. That's the rules. So um, I also have winner winner chicken dinner for you. Are you ready? Oh, and black switch machines back online. We don't have a ton of them. Like we have less than I think 15 machines available. So if you want one by all means, grab it. Sure, absolutely. If you want it to ship right now, you would need to pay at time of checkout. So we, you know, if you want your machine ASAP, go ahead, order it, pay at time of checkout and we will get that order over to Ellison and have them ship that machine on out to you in the next few, well, probably take about two weeks to get it to you. So that's it, that's my updates. <laughs> Let's see, we've got winner, winner, chicken dinner. Are you ready? Our first winner, winner, chicken dinner from 446, which was the comprehensive do's and don'ts of the Sizzix Sidekick machine with must-see advanced techniques. It was the do not underestimate this machine, YouTube is what it was. Our first one is Ginger, Ginger Gargoyle. Hello, how are you doing today, my dear? You're a winner, winner, chicken dinner. Are you like going, ah? Are you posting it on Facebook? Are you texting everybody? <laughs> Congratulations, Ginger. Our second winner, winner is Roberta. Roberta Hicks. Hello, Roberta Hicks. How are you doing today? Yay! <laughs> Congratulations to the both of you, Roberta and Ginger. We'll have to do a winner, winner, chicken dinner dance. Are you ready? You're a winner, chicken dinner. You're a winner, chicken dinner. Wahoo, cut you for you. Congratulations to the both of you. There's $25 in your online account. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, we do a giveaway. We do, we pull two winners every week from the comments posted below. Live chat does not does not count. You have to post your comment below and SMS guy James will approve it. It has to be approved, so he will approve your comment and then you go into the running to be uh, named a winner winner chicken dinner. We have software that randomly selects two of you every week and you get $25 to spend here at Scrapbooking Made Simple. Wahoo, could chew. All right, I think I'm good. Did I go over everything? And for those, for those of you who have a black switch machine already on order, keep an eye out. You're going to get an email saying that your order is awaiting fulfillment. And then a few days later, you're going to get an email or you're going to get your tracking numbers going to be put in your order. So if you have a black switch machine currently on order, those are being sent over to Ellison. I'm sending about 20 machines every two days which is why if you're placing a new order for a black switch machine, it's gonna take about two weeks for us to get to it because I've gotta finish the ones that have already been placed on order. Okay, all right, I think I'm gonna tilt down and we're gonna get started for today. Today it really is all about dyes, die cutting, coloring, well, opulent paper and what you can do with it, really what you can do with it. A few more techniques that you might not have known about and, um, and, and just really enjoying Alcohol markers, we're just going to use them as a regular marker. We're not that. You'll see. I think you're going to like what we have for you. And I have two amazing bundles for you on opulent paper. Holy smokes, artichokes. All right, down we go. Good to see everybody. I know that was a lot of announcements, right? But there's a lot going on. Let's see. So now I'm going to walk in on Monday morning and... Well, Claire doesn't work Monday morning, so, <laughs> but Renee does, and they're going to be like, say what? <laughs> yeah, we're just going to expedite these out because we've got it. So why not? We've got it. Let's do it. So here is the first card. How cute is that? I feel like this is not down. There we go. How darling is that? So this is paper. I think it's probably a napkin or paper. She found something. And then here is one of the dies. Okay, sample number one. And this is Claire, I think. Yes, Claire. And sample number two is 
James. So here's James's flag with the wreath of roses. And then last but not least, I have Doris. So these are all dies by Simply Define. It is our April collection, done early enough so that you have them in time for making cards for Fourth of July. Or like I said, several of the cards you may use, you'll find that they're, they're used all year round. Um, I think I'm going to show you really quickly also the storyboards. So here's the roses. And here is uh, one of the other dies. This one actually, well, it's in the packaging card for you to see. This one actually says the Pledge of Allegiance. So here are the dies cut out. This is the die that James did this out of. And then we also have a die where I did the Pledge of Allegiance. So it literally says, I pledge the allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which, oh my gosh, for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, by, with liberty and justice for all. I'm reading it backwards on the screen. <laughs> yeah, I'm reading it backwards. <laughs> so I have those two dies to... Um, to start with, the next two in the collection is my soldier. Wait till you see the samples done with this. You have remember our veterans as words. I have, there's the cute little silhouette and you've got God bless America, home of the free and the brave, couple clouds. And the last two dies for this month are my fireworks, wait till you see what we do with this, and my eagle. And the eagle has never forget and in God we trust. So definitely an unapologetically patriotic collection, no, no doubt about it. Um, we have the dies, they're sold individually at $13.99 each. If you wanted all six, it is a value price at $59.99, which puts them down to about 10 bucks a die. And these are full A2 size dies, full A2 size dies. And so you know nobody, that's a price that is unmatched. It really is unmatched. So I'm gonna get started and I'm gonna start with the Pledge of Allegiance. That was really hard trying to read it backwards. So I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. I'm gonna start with this die and I'm just gonna do some basic die cutting. Just so people can see those who are new, who don't know what a die cut is or how it works, you can get an idea of how easy it is. This is a piece of metal. It's called a wafer die because it is wafer thin. It has little ridges on the um, on one side and it's flat on the other. Those little ridges that you see are what is going to cut paper when you use a die cutting machine. There are no blades, so you can't get hurt and you you can cut usually up to two sheets of maybe 80 pound cardstock at a time. So I'm gonna grab my machine. And I think, hmm, I think I'm gonna just do, I think I'm gonna cut it out of a white, a, a very high gloss white. So this is part of the opulent ivory collection. It is very, I mean, it has a slight ivory tint to it, but it is kind of white. And I think I'm gonna cut my dye right out of this. So I'm just gonna trim this paper on down. In fact, I'm gonna do it this way. I'm gonna trim this paper right on down. And I'm gonna use my Sizzix Big Shot machine today. Okay. 
Okay, so trim on down and I'm going to keep those extra pieces. I might choose to use them later. This is a Sizzix Big Shot machine. Let me back it up just a little bit. And it's a die cutting machine. It's like one of the workhorses in the industry. It has a six inch platform so you can do any dies that are six inches or smaller. It comes with two plates it comes with a base plate and a shim. You will always need that shim when you are using wafer dies. It comes with two clear plates, one and, <laughs> well, that one's not so clear anymore. <laughs> one and two, because you're gonna sandwich everything typically between two clear plates, but you will notice that after a while your clear plates are not so clear anymore and you'll eventually have to replace them and that's just the way it is, but they do last for a really long time. Now my dies are very, very intricate and so my dies require a precision base plate and this is also a Sizzix tool. Precision base plate allows you to cut wafer dies, intricate wafer dies, and have all the bits and pieces fall right out. It is a chrome top, and you're gonna sit it right on top of your base platform and your solo shim and your precision base plate. Now the precision base plate takes the place of one of your clear plates. You're not gonna then put your clear plate down on top of that and your paper and your die and another clear plate and try to sandwich it through, it won't go. It's just too thick. The sandwich is too thick. It won't go through your machine. So you're going to have to remove one of those clear plates and you're going to cut directly into this precision base plate. The precision base plate allows the die to kind of bite in a little harder to force that cut because all you have in here is a roller. There's a roller in this machine and it's that roller that's applying enough pressure as your die goes through that cuts the paper. And remember, there's no blade. It's just these little ridges that are cutting the paper. It's amazing. So I'm gonna put my base plate, comes with the machine, my solo shim, comes with the machine. My precision base plate does not come with the machine, although we do have a bundle that includes it with it. My paper face up, the paper I wanna see, my die face down, and I'm gonna tweak it just a little bit on an angle so when it feeds through the machine, you don't get a loud thump. I'm just gonna, just a slight angle, and I'm gonna send it on through. So this is for peeps who haven't seen die cutting before. Now this is a super intricate die because it's all text. <laughs> so when I get to the other side, I'm just gonna do a whoop, slight rotate and send it back through. You're like, well, why did you rotate it? Well, because every die cutting machine, every die cutting machine has a sweet spot. Maybe my sweet spot is over here and your sweet spot is in the middle or on this end. Every die cutting machine is a little different. So if I just rotate the die and send it back, it's going to hit that roller underneath here in a different way, making sure that it cuts. I'd rather just rotate it and send it back than take the chance that it didn't cut. Let's see what I got. I think that looks good. Well, so this is what we're looking for now. This die has got a few little pieces in it that take a minute to pop out. And I didn't pre, I didn't pre cut these because that's kind of not showing you what you need to see. So there are some big pieces that need to come out. But when I'm all done, I'm gonna have my Pledge of Allegiance. Let's see if I can get this piece out. 
that one. All my little bits. And there are quite a few bits. go that's a big piece there we go okay so we're getting there and that's a big piece right there and this is a big piece right there yay okay so now let me just pop out my little ones on my little words. So I've got my Pledge of Allegiance. And that's what die cutting does. It takes the paper and without having any blades, it cuts everything out. Now I've got a lot of little bits and pieces here. <laughs> Wish me luck on getting it into the trash. <laughs> I see a vacuum is going to definitely be needed by the time I'm done with this class. And I'm just trying to get out the rest of the little bits and pieces. So you can see how intricate the die is and why it requires that precision base plate. If you were to do this die without the precision base plate, you are going to struggle and probably get frustrated because the little pieces are just not going to, do you see how easy they're just popping right out? No problem at all. Okay, I think I've almost got it. But every time I look, I see one more, one more piece all the centers of the G's and the E's and the A's. <laughs> all right, well, I'm going to call it good. I think you can get the idea. And then I'm just going to put it on to, this is, again, this is out of the Ivory Collection, and it's a high gloss piece of paper. And I'm just going to put it right on to a piece of my red and this is out of the festive collection now what I want to let you know about the festive collection is that we have all that's currently available I believe it's sold out at sizzix.com I'm not sure what other retailers have it but we purchased all that they had left so I will show you the collections of the of the opulent paper a little bit later and we've bundled it so that you get a value price you're going to get I'm using four different collections of opulent today and so I've bundled two collections with a free gift and two collections with a like kind of like a free gift so I'll show those to you later let me just this is sticky dots and you're like what the heck is she doing these are sticky dots and they're exclusive here to scrapbooking made simple if you have a intricate die like this and you've been trying to put it down with glue <laughs> putting a little bit of glue on the entire back oh no let's make your life a lot easier on this sheet is a couple hundred thousand little tiny micro dots one side has nothing one side has the micro dots <laughs> Now they're on my fingers. Those micro dots, you're going to put them on the back of your image all at one time. All we have to do is open it up, lay my paper down, close it up, give a really nice press, and then peel it back up. Now micro dots are repositionable. Oh, I just pulled. Darn it, I pulled too hard. All right, well, we're gonna put that back in. Micro dots are repositionable for a little while which means you can move it for a little bit but then once it goes permanent it's permanent let's get my liberty and i'm just going to line this right up here i 
Now I accidentally, when I was pulling it off the micro dots, pulled off my my die. So I accidentally pulled off part of my United. No big deal. I'm going to marry it back up. I'm going to put it back down like nobody ever noticed. And bam, it's stuck. That's the beauty of micro dots. I mean, they are just absolutely amazing. Trim it out. And this die really doesn't need too much if you don't want. I mean, because the die is really meant to stand on its own, being that it is the Pledge of Allegiance. But look at how pretty that is. Put that on the fronts of your cards. Send this to, um, send this to your service uh, family, wherever they may be. Everybody who is serving our country, whether it be here at home or overseas. I mean, it's just a really nice card to send. So this is on the opulent red shimmer and look at how pretty is that. I'm gonna put this one aside. I'm gonna put that red shimmer aside because we may come back to it. And I'm gonna cut one more time. This time I'm gonna use, look at that. That is from the charcoal collection of opulent and it's their pearly shimmer like the red from the festive only this one's out of the charcoal. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna cut this out of the charcoal as well. So let's cut it one more time. Do it this way. Now the fallouts are gonna fall out a little easier from this piece of paper than it did from that white glossy because the glossy paper ha is a coated paper which means that that paper, the white glossy, started as just a white sheet of cardstock on the back, plain cardstock, just white, and then they laid this glossy coat over the top of it, almost like a plastic is over the top of it to give that shiny, glossy, finished look to it. Whereas the shimmer paper is just beautiful cardstock. It's shimmer cardstock all the way through. So it doesn't have a coating over the top of it. Let's go ahead and let's cut this. And you'll see that the fallouts are gonna come out, all the little pieces are gonna come out a little bit easier out of this one because it doesn't have to go through that coating as well. So let's send it on through. And then I'll do a tweak and bring it on back. And then we're gonna move on. But I wanted to show people who hadn't seen die cutting before, just very basic die cutting and what you can do and how simple it is. And when you see these dies in your local independent craft store, what it is you're supposed to do with them. I think that looks See, and you can see, look at that. See, it's, it's coming out much faster, much easier, because of course it's not a coated type of paper. All my little pieces just kinda come right on out. Pull out the big pieces. Pull out the big pieces and in no time at all when you're using regular cardstock I mean that took that took what a third the time but it's regular cardstock so it falls out much easier now it wouldn't happen like that if I did not have my precision base plate. I would be struggling and some of these might not cut all the way out and it can get frustrating. So if you're doing intricate dies and you've got a Sizzix Big Shot machine, a Big Kick machine, a Big Shot Fabby or an old a Vintage machine, uh, whatever Sizzix Big Shot machine you own, 
A precision base plate is nice. Do you need it with the plus machine? They say not because the pressure is a little differently. I do know that the machine will loosen up over time and you may start needing to use it with a Big Shot Plus machine. What about a switch machine? Yes, a precision base plate is needed with a switch machine when doing intricate dies. Absolutely. Okay, so this one's pretty much done. Took a lot less time. This time I'm gonna use a piece of paper from, ooh, I know, this is like, woo, what did she just, that's very loud. <laughs> Well, it can be, but you know what? It can also be pretty darn amazing when you when you use it in spurts. <laughs> you know, when you use it in a little bit of spurts, it can it can really look amazing. So let me finish and let's see. Now with this, with this, I can just do regular. So let me cut it down to size. Okay, with this I can just put it on like this. It's loud, I agree. And you know what? I think I'm going to pull this one off real quick before it cements down. Oh, can I get it? Can I get it? Before it cements down. have to put off I'll pull my knife off later okay so I'm gonna keep that one so I can do it like this and it's very very loud but what if I wanted to change it up what if I wanted to take and color this can I do that well again this is white paper on the back and a coated paper on top so this is non porous they've taken a white piece of paper and laid this iridescence this hologramish image over the top of it. It's kind of a glittery with a holographic iridescent -y look to it. But if that's too much for you, totally get it. Grab a alcohol ink marker. These are the Couture Creations alcohol ink markers. They retail for a buck 99. They are a great marker for a buck 99. And because this is a non-porous piece of paper, I need to use a non or an alcohol type marker, whether it be a Sharpie or a Bic. Although I'll tell you, you're going to pay almost that much for those markers as you would for one of Ozzy Andrews. Are they refillable? No, he's not doing refills. Why? Because they're a dollar ninety nine a marker. That's why. So. When you run out, you just buy yourself a new one. There's just no reason to do a refill. He'd have to buy too many of them. And the markers are so inexpensive. I suppose if the markers were five or six or seven or eight or nine dollars like Copics are, these are very similar to a Copic, then you would probably want a refill when the housing is costing you $5.50 just for the housing, and the housing is the actual body of the marker, but these aren't. This is costing you a dollar, a dollar ninety-nine. Now that is the best price we can do on them. They're not going to be at any better price. And come National Scrapbooking Day, we have the next round of colors. Now, I've toned it down. You can still see that it's got the glittery behind it. The alcohol ink doesn't cover the glitter. It's a translucent, transparent ink, well, transparent ink. So you can still see the glitter of the paper coming through, but it tones it down. So then when you put this on, now you've got a red glitter paper coming through although it's not glitter paper because you're coloring on top of a coated piece of paper but it looks like it's glitter paper because it's got that red glitter coming through it it's got this iridescent holographic -y glitter coming through it but it's been toned down because we did it in red so if you've got the mystical paper 
And there's a couple sheets that are pretty darn loud in there. They don't have to stay that way. You can take the glitter paper, you can take the iridescent -y paper. Where did I put it? Anybody see where I put it? <laughs> oh, right here. You can take this and tone it down to what you want by just using a marker to just using a marker to color it. So if I colored the whole thing and I don't care if there's streaks in it. My dye is going to cover almost all of that up. And now I have a choice. Do I like it on the shimmer red? Do I like it on the shimmer red? Or do I want it to stand out a little bit more and put it on what's now a holographic glittery red? Your choice. But I also have it in the black. So let's do one more. Let's just cut a piece out. Maybe I even like Maybe I even like the black on the red. Totally up to you. But I can also do it in a blue. Hmm. Let's see what I think of this blue. I'm not going to go back and forth over my thing. I'm just going to do it and move on. Do it and move on. Just color it right with my alcohol ink marker. Would I use my Copics for this? No, they're just too darned expensive to use the ink for this. But for $1.99, Ozzy Andrews alcohol ink markers are amazing. Claire loves them. She loves them better than the Copics. She says she just has an easier time with them. I don't know. So now I've got it in blue. And now I can put my blue over the top. And it just adds a little something because you've got that glittery holographic behind it really up to you but it just looks great whether you do it on the red glitter you've changed the holographic to the red or you just grab a piece of shimmer paper and do it with that your choice really pretty really easy to do basic die cutting and using opulent paper Let's put those there. Let's see if I can wipe my little craft mat down. A little bit of alcohol to get off my alcohol markers and done. All right, moving on. Now we're going to move to a technique where we're going to color directly onto paper. And I want to show you it in both white cardstock and the cardstock that comes again in the ivory collection of the opulent. So this cardstock has this texture to it. Again, it started as white cardstock, just a piece of white paper, and then they laid on this non-porous type texture that has, it has a, I don't know if it's a linen-y finish or what kind of finish on it. It's matte, and you can hear that. I mean, that sounds like plastic, right? Doesn't sound like paper. 
sounds like plastic because it kind of is. So I'm gonna take one of my dies and I wanna cut it out of both white cardstock, basic white cardstock, and that specialty paper from the Opulent Collection. So the Opulent Collections are only made up of specialty papers, whether it be a high gloss or that holographic glimmer or the shimmer paper. This happens to just be plain old white cardstock. And I'm gonna cut my I'm gonna cut my die out. Now the die I'm using is my soldier. And we're gonna take it from that to something magical. And it's going to be easy peasy. But I want you to see why I recommend the opulent paper. You can absolutely do it with your white. Yes, you can. But I wanna show you that the opulent paper gives you an opportunity for um, just in case you make an oops. Now I'm gonna die cut this and we're just gonna send this on through. I've got the same platform I had before, which is my base platform, my solo shim, my precision base plate, the plate facing up. If you can read the directions and you're about to send this through, no, stop, flip it over. Doesn't matter what generation of precision base plate you have, whether it be a black one or a chrome one, that it needs to be facing up. I'm gonna put my basic white paper down. Nothing special about my white paper. I'm using, I think, 100 pound white paper. And I'm gonna send it on through. And I am gonna rotate at the end just because it's easier to do a quick rotate. Oh, but it came right out. Let's see. Well, let's see if, oh, maybe I don't. Oh, maybe I don't have to rotate. It popped right out. And I'm gonna, let's see, send it on back. And let's cut. Now this one's coated. So this one, I know this one's definitely gonna need a, well, I don't wanna say definitely. I shouldn't say definitely on anything. Let's cut it down. This is the coated piece of paper. It's a not quite as bright white as a bright white piece of cardstock. And I'm gonna save all these little pieces because this makes great pieces for matting or for cutting out your sentiments. And I'm gonna wash, rinse, and repeat. So I'm gonna die cut this one more time so I have it in both the white cardstock and the Sizzix opulent paper. And through. And this time I'm gonna definitely do a rotate. You saw it didn't just pop right up. <laughs> it's because this is coated paper. It's gonna require that little rotate and send back, but easy enough to do. And now we're done and we can play with both of them side by side so you can see the difference. So all my little bits and pieces, look at how easy is that. That makes your heart happy. Let's get all, all my little bits and pieces. And this is the coated paper and it still came out that simple. And it does sound like plastic. So it's non-porous on top, definitely porous on the backside because it's just white card that they have layered the special coating on top of to give you this specialty paper. And specialty paper is getting to be more and more expensive. You can pay up to two bucks a sheet, sometimes more. Oh my gosh, you could save all those stars, but I'm not gonna save all those stars. The way Ellison has done their opulent paper is wonderful. There's five different sheets of specialty paper in each opulent pack, and there's 10 sheets of each color. So a total of 50 sheets. And for this YouTube, we were able to get a, a really great value for you. Let all those little stars pop out. Okay, so now I've got two exact images side by side.
one in cardstock, one in opulent ivory. And you can see the difference in the color. This one's definitely more ivory than this one. And you're saying, but what are you going to do with it? Well, I'm just going to color this directly onto the card. I, I'm, I'm literally going to color straight onto it. So um, just to keep things from being too messy, I'm going to go ahead and put a piece of paper underneath and I'm going to grab I'm going to grab my blue and I am directly on my paper with my alcohol marker. Now, do you have to use an alcohol marker for this one? No, because I'm on cardstock. So any marker is going to dye base marker is going to seep into the paper and is going to be just fine. I'm just pulling these out because I have it and I'm just going to literally color. Now I'm not trying to do a blend, I'm just using this as a marker. So whatever marker you have, if you're using it on plain cardstock, no problem. And I can lift it every now and then to see where I'm at. And this takes the place of paper piecing. This definitely takes the place of paper piecing. And I'm going to come down. And there's no skill required. Just a little bit of coloring. Now, because I'm using an alcohol marker, it's definitely going to seep through the back. So if you're using a Tombow or if you're using a Tim Holtz or a Memento, whoever you've got, a clean color, whatever you've got, it may not bleed all the way through, but an alcohol ink marker is. So I've got that. Now I can come in with my red and I can start to do my flag. So if you've got a white die cut, you can make it anything that you want to make it. You don't have to sit there and paper piece. You can literally just color. Your paper. I'm just kind of following so that it doesn't take any time at all. And I'm not going to worry about going outside the lines. I just want to get all my red done. Every now and then I pick it up and take a look at it and have I missed any place and if I have, go back in, color it. And again, I am on white cardstock. There's nothing special about this cardstock at all. Okay, so far so good. Now maybe I grab my black. And I come in and start coloring in my black. So I see that, well, nope, I'm gonna go black.
and I can just start coloring him in. in my black and if I need to kind of pick it up to see where I need to go next And I'm just coloring him. So it's not hard at all. What you can do with white paper is amazing. But I made a mistake. So I'm coloring him. And I would come around and I would come back and maybe do Maybe do my whole frame, or maybe I just do that part so it looks like the, I mean, it's up to me what I want to do. But I went from something that looked like this and changed it into something that looked like that by just, just coloring. That's all I did, but I, I made a mistake. I can see my mistake. I'm just putting a black border around it. You don't have to. But I can see my mistake. This was supposed to be red. Right here. That was supposed to be red. But very cool how you can take a, just a piece of white paper and with some markers make all the difference in the world. And anywhere I've missed, anywhere I've missed, I just have to come back with my marker and touch it up. But look at how easy was that, right? Piece of cake. But what's the difference between this and the opulent paper? Well, quite a bit. Let's start with that blue again. And let's just color it blue, just like we did the first one. And I'll put a, well, maybe I won't put a black border on this. I don't know, we'll see. So this requires an alcohol marker because it is non-porous, if you try to use a Tombow um, or a, uh, gosh, um, a Memento marker or a Tim Holtz Distress marker, it's not going to happen. It needs to be an alcohol marker because it needs to be able to dry. And a water or a dye based marker isn't going to dry on top of a non porous material. It would be like taking a felt pen and trying to write on metal. It's never going to dry. So now this one has a texture to it where the, the regular paper does not. This has this slight texture to it and it's got this, this lines that run through it almost making it look like fabric. But the biggest difference about this is you have an opportunity if you make an oops. So if I make an oops, I'm going to be okay. And I'm going to make the same oops. So I'm going to color all of this red.
color all of this red. And then come in with my black. So I'm doing a wash, rinse, and repeat. So right now, they kind of look very similar. You can see how the same color red looks different on a non-porous paper versus a porous paper. The blues are slightly different, the red's slightly different. Let me do that black, and then let's make a mistake. And I'm just coloring on scratch paper. All right. All right, I think that's going to be good enough. You'll be able to see the mistake. All right, so I did the same mistake twice. Right here should have been part of the red flag, right there. right here should have been part of the red flag. Now, if I'm working on cardstock, there's nothing I can do about it. I'm stuck. I can't take and wipe it off. I can't take alcohol and go in there and try and wipe it off. It is what it is. It's going to be what it's going to be. And because it's black, I can't take the red and color over it. The red will just absorb into that black color and you will never see it. So I just can't take my black or my red and go right over my black. It just isn't going to make a difference. But this, this is non-porous paper, which means the color is sitting on top. It's not sinking in. It's drying on top, which means I have an opportunity to fix mistakes a little bit of alcohol and I can go in and I can erase my mistake So then I can finish the way it's supposed to be. So that is supposed to be part of my red. And now I can go in. And any place that still needs to be colored, I can color in. But I have fixed a mistake that was an oops. And I could fix it anywhere on this paper. So if you're coloring straight onto your paper and you're using just white cardstock, once you've colored it that color, you are done. But if you're using a specialty paper that gives you an opportunity to fix, a little pop out right there, pop out.
all I have to do is go in, remove the color, and add back in the color that I need. That's the beauty of specialty paper. When it's a coated paper, you have options. Let's go right in there and kind of fix it. Oops. Well, I wasn't supposed to do that either. So I accidentally got a little bit of black right there. No big deal. Go in and erase a piece of paper. A little bit of alcohol. And just wipe it out. It's a do-over. Wipe it out. Come back in and lay your color back down. And it's like it never happened. Like it never happened. Right? Done, easy to do, effective. No talent. That's my kind of crafting. Where if I make a mistake, I just fix it. And that I don't have to think about what colors or how to paper piece in. It just works. So you have your choice. You can do it on regular white cardstock, absolutely. But you'll never be able to go back in and fix that mistake. Because you're on a specialty cardstock, you have the opportunity to go in and fix your mistakes. Let me put that there. This is not seeping into the paper. This is sitting on top of the paper. Of course, if you have it all over your fingers, <laughs> like everywhere I touch. <laughs> Everywhere I touch, I'm getting it. <laughs> but that's okay. I can just wipe it off and start again. That got on the back side, and that's very porous. So that's never going to come off because it seeped in from the back side. But I was able to take. my mistakes. How often do you get to say that in crafting where you can erase your mistakes and start over? And that's what we did here. And now, now all we have to do is cut them down and mat them. I don't know, do we want a white border around it? Up to you. Grab my sticky dots. 
lay him down, give a good press. And up we go. Could I color this in? Sure. I could color this in a camo or something. Absolutely. Could I back this piece? Sure. We still have a little bit of this. Do I want them to be glittery stars? Oh, that looks good. Let's cut it down just a little bit more. Take that off before it cements. So now using that specialty paper, So now I've got glittery stars. Your choice. You have options. But this allowed me to erase where basic white paper will not. Opulent paper gives you that opportunity on several of their sheets. If it's a coated sheet of paper, you can wipe it off. All right, let's move on. Ooh, let's do this one. So talk about a coated piece of paper. All right, so I'm gonna use these two dies. I'm gonna use the fireworks and I'm gonna use the silhouettes. And let's, let's play. So I'm gonna take another piece of their coated paper and this is out of the festive collection, I think. This is out of the festive. It's got white iridescent glitter on it. Not on it, it's, it's flat, it's smooth, it's high gloss, but it's got a look to it of, of iridescent -y, glittery underneath it. It's very, very pretty. But I want to use my, I want to use my fireworks die. And I want to make fireworks. So, Let's trim this down. Now I'm not going to cut this paper with this die. I'm going to color this paper so I can use that die on top of it. And you're like, say, what? All right, well, let's just play. Let's grab some yellow. And again, this is a coated paper, so you need an alcohol marker on top, whether it be Bic or Sharpie or, well, I wouldn't use your Copics because, gosh, the prices, they're just, they're expensive. <laughs> Couture Creations are about the same price as quite a few of your, your, oh, which color do I want? I want this color. Of your Bics and your Sharpies. And the benefit is you've got two sides to it. So I'm just drawing. No rhyme, no reason, not trying to be pretty. I'm going to let some of the colors blend into each other. Maybe a little more yellow. So now I've got red on my yellow. Oh no, what do I do? Scratch piece of paper. And once that red is out, it's out. If you blend your tips together, 
perfectly fine with alcohol markers. They're meant to do that. You can absolutely blend your tips together. Maybe a little bit more on my blue. Am I trying to make a hot mess? Yeah, kind of a little bit. So once that all comes out and it's off my nib, I'm good to go. Okay, so it does look like a hot mess, no doubt about it. But let's see what we get. Now I'm gonna take my fireworks. And I can still see my glittery coming through it. That ink is transparent, sits right on top so you're not losing what's behind it. It's still there. But let's cut this out of, oh, let's cut this out of, Plain black? Do I want it out of a plain black? Hmm, or do I want it out of a shimmer black? Let's do it out of the shimmer black. That was really pretty. Now this die is gonna cut in two, which means all those little fireworks are going to cut into. It's going to stay this square, but those little fireworks are the only things that are going to pop out. Bring our machine over. Same platform we've been using. Let's run it on through. And let's see if it needs a rotate. Well, it stayed in, so we might as well, and we'll just send it on back. Okay. So let's see what we've got. Oh yeah, all my little bits and pieces, all my little stars. So there are my fireworks. We don't want it on that plain white paper. Oh no, no, we need it to sparkle and shine. And maybe you don't want it to be just silver fireworks or gold fireworks. And maybe you don't want to pull out glitter to make your fireworks. That's where this comes in. Instant Presto. We have fireworks. <laughs> Okay, kind of looks like a hot mess here. But now we have fireworks. It's 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 that simple. It's taking it's taking this paper out of the opulent pack, grabbing your colors. Let's use some different colors. Ooh, that piece is big. Let's see, I always like my yellows. Let's wipe off my nib. I always like my yellows. And maybe some pinks. And maybe some blue. And before you know it,
you have fireworks. I know, kind of looks like a hot mess. until you do that. And then all of a sudden, it's like, hey, wait, I got fireworks. <laughs> options, it's all about options. You wanna blend some of those colors together? Blend them together. Fireworks are lots of different colors. You don't want as many colors in your fireworks? Okay. This one I did in swirls. I did little circles. And I did it a little bigger so I could move it. So if there was a space I liked better, so I could move it around and find the firework that I like the best. I think I'm gonna do that one. Get that little one out on the bottom. All right, so let's tape this down. And it was that fast and it was that easy coated paper. Crazy, right? Crazy. Now, can I wipe all this off? Probably. Uh, let's put this one down and then let's I think I like it right there. So grab my sticky paper down. So the sticky paper, all the dots are going to stay there. Any place that there's an opening where you can see through where it's not the dark gray, the sticky dots are going to stay there. So you can use the sticky sheets again and again and again. Now every place that's gray, those sticky dots are going to pick up. So you, you're not going to have sticky dots there anymore. But you use these sheets again and again and again until there's literally no stick left to be stuck. I liked it like here. And then let's trim off the back. And instant fireworks. It took what, two minutes to make those fireworks? <laughs> It'll probably take you longer to decide what colors you wanna use. But can we wipe this off? Well, let's see. You did it and you made mud. Can we get rid of mud? Let's see. Ooh, definitely mud. Well, you live to color another day. <laughs> Again, coated paper. Several sheets in each of the opulent packs are coated. So we live to see another day. A little bit of alcohol. And we start anew. Of course, my hands are dirty, so I keep getting it on there. A little bit of alcohol. And we start anew. I 
I like the circles, maybe because they burst out. We start anew. Nope, that one's down. We just fixed it and we just changed it. Done. But let's finish this one. Let's take our little kids. And I think I'm gonna use from the charcoal collection I think I'm going to use the high gloss, another high gloss. So another coated paper, white on the back. You know it's coated. See how the shimmer has shimmer on both sides where the mirror only has mirror on one side and the iridescent glitter only has it on one side and the, oh, just tore that. Iridescent only has it on one side. That, that gives you a clue that it's a coated paper and that you need to use a non, or it's a non-porous material, so you need to use an alcohol type marker with it. If I were to put my marker on this, would it wipe off? No, probably not. This is more of a dye-based image and, or a paper and it's going to seep in. It's the same on both sides just like standard cardstock is the same on both sides. If you've got white on the back, that's a, that's a little indication, hey, is this a coated paper? Hmm, I wonder if it is. Let me try it. So I'm gonna take that mirror paper and I'm gonna die cut out my little band of patriotic kids out on a Sunday going to 4th of July parade on a Sunday and I'm going to keep this and let's cut this one out so coated paper even though it doesn't look very intricate because it's a coated paper that means it's got the white backing it's got that silver and then probably another uh, color or another clear on top of it. So you just want to make sure you're using the right tools to do the right job. And because I'm going to ask it to go through obviously more than one piece of paper, since it's not white and it has silver on it, it has that charcoal-y pewter metallic color to it, it's obviously more than one sheet of paper fused together Ooh, to make There we go. Little creaks and cracks are okay. I did not rotate this enough and it's trying to go through uh, a, a coated paper, almost like a plastic on top. So let's just rotate just a little bit and hopefully I didn't double cut. We'll see. If we did, it's only paper, I'll cut again. Okay. So the little creaks and cracks are fine. Pull my little, oh, aren't they so cute? Oh, they're so 
cute. <laughs> okay, let's set them down. Let's get them in the right place. Bring over my sticky grid. Pop that little piece out. Lay it down. No trying to use glue. <laughs> Give a good press. So anywhere you see all this opening, if those dots haven't been used before, they're not gonna be used now. You can come back and use those later. It's only going to apply the dots where the paper is. And then let's layer it right over the top. Done. So simple to do. I know it looks like a hot mess, but the minute you put, the minute you put that firework on top, it goes from this to this. Crazy, right? But it's all because we've got that coated paper from Sizzix. Okay, time to move on. Let's play with, hmm, what do I want to do? <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna use this die next. And I'm gonna cut it, I'm gonna cut it out of black, just black cardstock, basic black cardstock. And I'm gonna cut two of them. Yeah, I'll keep that. Basic black cardstock, we all have it. I'm going to cut it twice and I'm not going to cut them at the same time because I know it's intricate and I really want to make sure that it cuts and I will rotate at the end. It may not need it because this is just black, uh, black cardstock. There's no coating on the top. This is probably 100 pound black cardstock is what I'm using. So simply defined, I have 100 pound and 80 pound both in black and in white. I'm gonna rotate just to be on the safe side. And I'm gonna do this twice. So I'm gonna do a wash, rinse, and repeat. And it's all gonna fall out. I'll cut the other one in just a minute. But see, that's what makes your heart happy. When you're a die cutter and you pull your dies out and that's what you get, it's like, oh, <laughs> it's like a little moment of thrill. <laughs> Seeing all those little pieces just come right out. Knowing you don't have to poke and poke and poke. All right, I think I got most of it. Oh. Wish me luck on this one. <laughs> Doris gives me about a 80-20 chance of making it. The 80 is the chance that it doesn't make it <laughs> into the trash. <laughs> she knows me, <laughs> SMS girl Doris. <laughs> I'm about that accurate with the trash underneath my desk too. <laughs> All right, so there's one. I'm gonna do a wash, rinse, and repeat. Just 
just so I have two of these to play with. Oh, that's by a hair of a chinny chin chin. Do you think I'll make it? Well, no guts, no glory. So that's literally just making it. But we're going to try it anyway, and I'm not going to tape it down. We're just going to go for it. Worst that happens is I'm wrong. <laughs> Don't tell Mr. SMS I said that. <laughs> I'll deny, deny, deny. <laughs> according, according to me, with him, I'm never wrong. <laughs> no, not really. What well, kinda? <laughs> okay. Let's see. So, yep, wash, rinse, and repeat. Look at, we got the same. Isn't that just magic? Gosh, I don't know what life was. I don't remember life before a precision base plate. I think it's kind of like labor and a baby, you know? <laughs> you kind of put it out of your mind how hard it was, how miserable it was. <laughs> but then the precision, you know, cutting intricate dies was always a challenge before the precision base plate. It just was, and you'd sit there and you'd, You'd shim and you'd cringe and you'd try to fussy cut some of the pieces out. And then the precision base plate came along and <laughs> it was like a unicorn moment. And, you know, the clouds parted and rainbows appeared. If you're doing intricate dies and you're using a Sizzix Big Shot machine or a Big Kick machine, you really want to get a precision base plate. It just makes your life happy. All right, I think I'm good there. So now I've got two to play with, yay. And I'm gonna start on just, I think I'm gonna start on the shimmer paper. So now this is the white. So, so far in the shimmer, this shimmer comes in, well, they have two, they have an ivory. So we've used the red. The red comes in the festive. And we've used, whoo, we've used the, the charcoal, which comes in the charcoal. This is the white shimmer, or is this the ivory shimmer? Man, they're close. Let's see, what color is this? Okay, yeah, no, those look the same. So there's a white shimmer and there's an ivory shimmer. Oh no, okay, not this. No, definitely not the same. This is the ivory shimmer, comes in the ivory pack. This is the white shimmer, comes in the festive pack. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use the ivory. I got a little schmutz on it. All right, well, we'll turn it over. Nobody will see the schmutz. So I'm gonna take And I'm going to put my die right down on it. Ooh, plenty of sticky there. Like how many more times is she going to use that sticky sheet? I'm going to use it till there's nothing left to use. Can you color your sticky sheet so you can see the dots? No, you really can't. <laughs> they just, people have tried it. It just really doesn't work great. Can I order the sticky sheets with a slight tint on the dots? No, I've tried. <laughs> I just, they just, they, I would have to order like 200,000 sheets of sticky dots. That's a lifetime supply of sticky dots. Maybe it's even, I, maybe it was even more than 200,000 sheets. I'd have to do a run forever because it would be special just for us. I think it would be a good idea and that they could sell them every place else, but okay. All right. But I'm thankful the manufacturers look out for us. 
That's why you can't find sticky sheets everywhere. And the sticky sheets are 10 sheets. They're eight by 10 and it's $10.99 per pack. And yes, you get 10 full sheets in there. All right, so now I'm using my shimmer paper in ivory. And I've got my flag on it, but I wanna add to it. I wanna add some color to it. I wanna make it pop. And the way to do that is by, again, using your alcohol markers. Now I chose black paper because I can go in with my alcohol marker and if I accidentally hit the black paper, the alcohol marker is going to absorb into the black paper and you're never going to see it. If I put white paper over the top of this and then tried to color in, of course, anytime I hit the white paper, or maybe I do red paper or blue paper, anytime I hit that paper, the alcohol marker is going to color it. The black absorbs the color. That's what black is known to do. It absorbs the color. The white reflects color, black absorbs color. So if I wanna go in here, I can come in and on my shimmer paper, because I want that shimmer to come through. Again, the ink in these markers is transparent. So if I just color in and I'm getting it on the black, I'm getting it on my black outline and I am okay with that. I don't have to be careful, careful. I can come in and start coloring my red, but I'm not gonna lose the shimmer of the paper. That shimmer is gonna stay underneath there and you're going to be able to see it. It's not, it's not like glitter, like bling, it's shimmer, like soft. And coloring right on top of the black allows me to skip paper piecing. And I can go in and color all my flowers. and all that shimmery goodness of the paper is going to stay true. People use opulent paper for making mats or maybe die cutting with it. But really, the opportunity is so much more. Can you see the shimmer? I'm not losing it. I'm just coloring it as opposed to cutting the red shimmer and coming back in and paper piecing each one. No, no, no. <laughs> well, you can. It'll be beautiful. Depends upon how much time you've got. And then I can add Maybe just a few little leaves. Oh, I missed a red. A few little leaves in my green.
and just come in here and color. And in no time at all, you're transforming it. Super easy to do. Right over the top. Not giving a whole heck of a thought of thought to the only lines I'm making sure that I'm staying in are the lines that define the perimeter or the, the exterior border. I just don't want to go out of those lines, but I can go over all the others. So I've got that beautiful shimmer in the background. Fast, easy, effective. You need a quick card? Wow, this is a way of doing it. Now if I go over the line and I accidentally get some in this area here or in here or up there, am I going to be able to wipe it away? No, probably not. This is a shimmer paper and it's not a coated paper, not like the other ones are. You don't have to guess though where to put your color because you're just coloring inside, inside the lines. Last one. Now I think I'm just going to leave the flag the way the flag is. And in no time at all, Super fast, super easy, super effective. But you have another option. I did cut two of them, remember? Now I should probably keep, let's see, I did this one, and I did this one, and we did this one, and we did these. Probably should keep them kind of close by. Okay, we did one more. Because you have another type of paper you have a glitter paper. Actually, you have two. So this glitter paper comes with the opulent ivory and it's a glitter without a glitter. So there's no iridescence on this paper at all. It's glitter and it, it is, it's not smooth. It's got a rough texture. But then you also have this glitter that comes with the festive collection. And this does have an iridescence. You do have sparkly colors coming out at you. Where this one, it's just like a crystal glitter, a glitter without glitter. So depending on which pack you choose, you'll get one of these. If you're doing the ivory, you get this one. And if you're doing the festive, you get that one. And they both work equally as well. It just depends upon what you want to do with your project. Do you want something that has a touch of glitter without it being bling? Then you go with the ivory. Do you want something that's got more, Woo! I see you, hello, pay attention to me, hello, here I am. That's this one. Just depends upon what you want your outcome to look like. It's your finished project. So I'm going to do the same. I'm going to take an I will use a new glitter dot just because I'm going on top of paper. It's a brand new sheet. I'm going to put it down, cover it up. Anywhere you don't see the black paper, those sticky dots are going to stay so you can pull them up with something else, another die cut. A 
Okay. Now this is glitter paper. So when you put this down, you really need to put it down. You need to give it good pressure. You need to make sure it's down because that glitter paper, it's hard to get things to adhere to and to stick to. So you really want to make sure it's down. I am not going to try and pull this one back up. Okay, let's cut it out. Can you hear that? You can, you can hear how thick it is. Oh, my mats are off, but that's okay. You'll forgive me. Now I'm going to color this the exact same way. that I did this one. I'm going to go in there and I'm going to color right on top of that glitter as opposed to the shimmer. This is a little softer, a little more subtle. This is a, a little more blingy, not a crazy amount more blingy, but definitely a little more blingy because it doesn't have the iridescence. If it had the iridescence to it, it would be, oh, hello. Now, when I colored here, I was able to just color straight on and use my brush tip as it's supposed to be used. I just went went right in and just used it perfectly. I'm going to be coloring on glitter and you do not want to go you do not want to go back and forth and back and forth with your brush tip. It will ruin your nib. This is tough. This is chunky. This is rough almost feels like a sandpaper kind of I mean so if you go back and forth you're going to hurt your nib the best way to do it is to dot so I can go in there and I just dot my color just dot dot my color and now instead of having that shimmer underneath it I'm going to have that glitter underneath it. So think about all the die cuts you have that you want to add just a little touch of something but didn't know how or don't have a big piece of a big roll of Stacy tape or a double sided tape to be able to make your own glitter paper. Ooh, something's going on. This is going to let you do it with the Sizzix Opulent. And I'm dotting. I'm not coloring. I'm dotting. I'm still going over the black paper because I can. But I'm dotting. Not hard, easy to do. And if you don't want that, let's see, if you don't want that glitter to be in the background, let's see if this will come through. I can go in. That blue is almost too light. Oh, let's see what this blue looks like. Oh, that's very blue. Well, let's try this one. I can go in and dot my background in too. If I didn't want it on a white background, 
Now I'm dotting. Do you see that? Let me go in a little bit more and down a little bit more. I'm dotting, not coloring, because I don't want to hurt my nib. Of course, these are $1.99 pens. <laughs> And I can just dot that blue color in, creating my background so that my background is no longer white. And it doesn't take long. And the effect is beautiful. I'm just dotting my color in. So when you do this, you have options. Do you like it on the shimmer paper? Do you like it on the glitter paper? Maybe for one card you do it on the shimmer because they're a little more subtle who you're going to give it to. And maybe for the other card you do it in the glitter because they're a little less subtle. <laughs> they like the woohoo could you and the, the bling. Let's make a leaf there and 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 let's make a leaf here maybe one there maybe one there so i added a few little leaves and then i can come back in and dot in the rest and just fill it in There's no right, there's no wrong. And let's do those red up top just so the top is done. And now I'm on glitter. It just really is up to you. How much do you want to do? How much time do you have? What technique do you like better? So far, we've done several different techniques. Some of them you may be going, oh, that's all me. And others you might be going, uh-uh, never, nope. But all of them are achievable, even if you're a new crafter, because so far all I've used is paper and some markers. So do we like that? Do we like the shimmer? The good thing is you don't have to choose. You can do both. Whether you get the opulent paper in festive or the opulent paper in ivory, you're going to get a shimmer and a glitter. Both of them have it. They're just slightly different colors. I need to go in there and do those. <laughs> That's okay. You can do this. But I've been working on black paper. So I've been working with coloring using black paper. That way the black absorbs any of the inks that I'm using. What if you don't want to use black paper? Well, that makes it a little bit of a challenge. Let me talk to you for a minute. So if you don't want to use black paper, that makes it a little bit of a challenge if you're going to color it with markers, no matter what markers you use. Because if you go in to color it with white or on white paper, of course the markers are going to get all over the white paper or pink or blue or red. That dark black paper is what absorbs that color. But you don't want it to be black. How do you do that? Okay, we're going to do that. You have to go with me on this. You just have to trust me. Okay, trust me, when we are done, 
It will be an aha moment, I promise you. And we're using Sizzix Opulent Paper to do it. I need the coated paper to make it work. Okay, are you ready? <laughs> okay, down we go. All right, so let's see. I'm going to use I'm going to use my eagle die. Gosh, if that's right, then I used all my dies. That's a wahoo kachoo. <laughs> I'm going to use my eagle die. That's what he looks like. The words you get are in God we trust and never forget. And so I'm, I, I know some people are gonna say perhaps that my collection is too patriotic. I'm not sure if there is such a thing as too patriotic, but if there is, please hold your comments. <laughs> I don't need to know, I'm good. And I'm not gonna apologize. So, <laughs> love him. I want to do him, and I don't want to use black paper. So, I'm going to grab a sheet of the shimmer. And I've got my white sheet right here, or my ivory sheet. Do I want to? I have white or ivory, which one? All right, we haven't used the white. We'll use the white. So, I'm going to do him. I'm going to cut him. I'm going to cut him in plain white cardstock to begin with. Plain white cardstock. Nothing special about the plain white cardstock, it just is. Let's bring over my die cut machine and let's get him out. Let's roll them on through. So typically I'm cutting this out of black paper, out of black paper to put it down on the shimmer paper so then I can color it in. This time I'm cutting it out of white paper. Plain white paper. nooks and crannies, fallouts out. And there's my eagle. Now I'm going to bring over that shimmer paper. We got something that's exciting. I hear something coming up. <laughs> and I'm going to use my sticky dots. A few little. Come on, be a little. Okay, I'm going to use my sticky dots. Because I'm going to put this white. on my shimmer paper. And you said, but Stacy, you just told me you can't do that. <laughs> Wait. Okay, let's put it on our shimmer paper.
rim it out. Ooh, that was some bad trimming, folks. And then we're going to color. And you said, Stacy, you just told me you can't do that. I, I know. Because when we do it, we're going to get it on the white. And I'm not going to care that I get it on the white. So let's take the brown. But I want that shimmer to come through. Let's take the brown and let's color in let's take the well, I don't have an orange. Let's use my yellow. So I am coloring right in on top of the shimmer. And can you see the shimmer coming through on that brown? So I'm not losing that shimmer of the paper. I'm just changing the color. Now let's come in and let's do, let's do the red. I'm gonna do all of these in red. And I know I'm getting it on the white. one and this one and this one and that one I'm even gonna do that one. So now I'm coloring in my red. I know it looks bad. I get it. And let's do the banner in red. good. Let's get this side in red. Okay, remember I told you to stay with me. You just have to have a little faith, a little trust, and a little pixie dust. I know it looks awful. Let's grab the blue. Let's make it look worse. <laughs> We'll do the stars blue. I'm just going to come in here and color all my little stars and my little openings. All blue. So here we are. Do we want to do the background in blue? Okay. So I'm just doing, I'm going to do the whole background in that 
beautiful royal blue. Make sure that's down. Just filling in that whole background. I think that little piece there is supposed to be red. I'm going to come back and do that. I'm just going to do this whole background in blue. I know I've got it all over the white. I need to make sure I don't hit the red. And I think that one little piece needs to be red. All right, there we go. You're like, Stacy, what did you do? Okay, now I'm gonna take, I'm gonna put that aside and I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna use the really iridescent glittery one. And I'm gonna cut again. So I use just a plain old piece of white. No, I want the plain white. I like the plain white. I'm going to use the glitter without glitter. Bring over my die cutting machine. Now I'm asking it to go through glitter, chunky glitter, adhesive to hold the glitter, white cardstock to hold the adhesive and the glitter. So I'm definitely going to rotate. And I might even send it back one more time just to be on the safe side. Because I'm asking that little die that has no blades to cut through all of that. That's a lot to ask it to cut through. Although it does look like it did pretty good. Maybe I don't have to. You know what? Never hurt. Ooh. Am I gonna get a kathunk? Oh, not too bad. Okay, let's see what I've got. All my little pieces. All my little stars I need popped out. It's 
get that little piece out. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I wanted to keep the shimmer of the paper. Oh, my blue doesn't look great. Okay, just go for it. And <laughs> let it dry. I wanted to keep the shimmer of my paper coming through. That was important to me. But I didn't want to use a black piece of paper on top, like I was using here and here. I wanted to use a different color, but to use a different color, you can see what happens when you start to color in, it gets absolutely everywhere. I mean, you can't, you can't color in the lines when you're working on white paper or a light color paper. You can when you're working with a black paper because that black absorbs that color, but on white, no can do. Unless you put the white down and use it as your template as to where to color. And then you cut it again. Oh, I missed a spot. And you line it up. And then it all goes away. I missed that spot right there. And that's supposed to be... Uh, I'm going to make that red. So we went from this... to this. We would never be able to do that if we put this glitter piece down and then tried to go in and color each individual piece. No can do. It would have it all over. It would look just like this. But putting a basic piece of cardstock down Using that as your template to where to color. I'm not going to pull it up. There's no reason to pull it up. No, I'm just going to stick this now down on top. It is your guide to perfection. I mean, that is a world of difference. A world of difference just by layering it over again. And by having that shimmer and that glimmer come through. I told you, just trust me. It's amazing. You don't even have to use white cardstock. You could take copy paper and die cut the copy paper and put the copy paper down on the shimmer paper and color it. Absolutely. You don't have to use anything expensive because it's never going to be seen again. It's going to disappear behind. Now that is a little bit of faith, a little bit of trust, and definitely a little bit of pixie dust right there. No question about it. That's a holy smokes artichokes. That's a make your heart happy. That's a what, what is she doing? But then you get there. So if I had wanted to do these and not had the black flag, I would have taken and cut this die in white, put it on the shimmer, and then colored in what I wanted to, and then come back with whatever color I wanted this to be at the end result. Do I want it to be that? 
I don't know, up to me. <laughs> but if I take if I take let's see, where is it? If I take and I cut it out of just basic cardstock. You could use copy paper. I don't have any in my hands or I would. Use something cheap that you don't care about because nobody's going to see it again. So I'm going to cut this out of just white cardstock. Send it through. Rotate, send it through. Pop all my little bits and pieces out. Get my little tweezers. Poke my stars out. And then let's put some sticky on the back, some sticky dots. I think that's probably good enough. I don't have every piece out, but I think you'll get the gist. Okay, sticky dots. Okay, Doris, I didn't even come close on that. You know what? I didn't even try. <laughs> Let's just be honest. I didn't even give it a try. Let's put this down. Grab my shimmer paper. Put it down. Trim it out. Grab my marker. Go in and color my flag.
every place I want red. I think this is going to be too dark. Okay, that's okay. Blue flowers? Why not? And get all my little bits and pieces out. Just color right in over the top. And then we cut it out of, let's use that really pretty, the more iridescent -y, glittery one. Boy, I really didn't get little bits and pieces out of my little flowers down here, but we'll make it work. Ooh, so let's cut it again out of this one. And then let's lay it right over the top. No, I I want to finish it. I want to do all the flowers, but no, I won't do all the flowers. and I'm working on glitter so if I want to be absolutely sure I just rotate one more time send it through and let's see what we got All my little pieces fall out. Let's pop out my little stars. That looks pretty good, close enough. And I go from this. that. You want to do your flowers blue? Good. 
go in and color them. That iridescence is going to pop through. Might have been a little gung ho on my flowers. How pretty is that? Now you want to do the stem of the, you want to do the flagpole? You can do the flagpole. That's where you take this and you just dab. And you want to put blue here. We can put blue there. Remember, you just dab. Dab, 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 dab. Now you're doing the best of both. Dab, 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 dab because you're working on glitter and you don't want to hurt your nib. So now I've got here and I've got here. This is not hard and it does not take much time, but it gives you an amazing result. I mean, it really gives you an amazing result. <laughs> and it started looking like a hot mess. And now I've taken the best of both worlds. I've taken the shimmer paper and I've colored on the shimmer paper. I've taken the glitter paper and I've colored on the glitter paper. I didn't have to use black as my outline, as my main dye. And it's just, it's beautiful and easy and fun and effective. And just use a icky piece of white paper to put on your shimmer paper, color in what you want to color in, Grab your glitter paper. If you want to add color to your glitter paper, dab it or no color to your glitter paper and just let it be. Okay, we did a ton, ton, ton today. I mean, we started all the way back when we just cut. All we did was cut our, our Pledge Allegiance but then we took and we grabbed the glitter paper, the, the iridescent holography paper from the collection, the mystical collection is where this came from. And we took it from a uh, silver, we took it from this color and used our alcohol markers to make it into a different color and then put our dye right on top of it. Although I am missing my I'm missing the rest of my United. There. So simple to do and I used a high gloss white to do it. So tons of options there. Then we took and made our 
are fireworks and you can make your fireworks any color you want. All you have to do is scribble, scribble, scribble and then lay your die on top. And if you don't like it, erase, erase, erase with some alcohol, right? Then we took and I showed you why using the opulent paper, the coated opulent paper is so nice because we took a die where I made an oopsie right there that's supposed to be part of the red flag. Couldn't fix it on regular regular cardstock because the ink absorbs right in, but I did the exact same mistake here and fixed it without any problem by just wiping it off with alcohol. Again, opulent paper, right? And then we did the flag. Whether we colored straight on the shimmer paper so you saved that beautiful shimmer, or we dotted it on the glimmer or the glitter paper, but both times we used a black die cut to give us the outline. But I wanted to show you how to not have to use a black outline and still be able to color. So we took our eagle and we made a die cut of him and put him right down on top of our shimmer paper. Then we colored him all in, made a hot mess, just followed where the openings were. Where I could see the shimmer paper coming through is where I colored. And then I added the die cut out of the glitter paper back on top of him. But then I wanted to show you that you can mix and match. So here it is on the shimmer paper, just a piece of white cardstock die cut out, colored in on the shimmer paper. And then I cut it on the glitter, but I went back in and added some color to the glitter so I could finish it out. Now I need to finish the flowers out here, I know. But the idea is you get the idea. <laughs> oh, what do we think? Okay, maybe patriotic dyes are not what you're looking for, but that's not what this is about. This is about technique, baby, and how to get the most out of a beautiful paper. We've got four sets that are gonna be on sale and we've done a special for you. So let me, let me, okay, so let me show you what's on sale. First off, we'll put all of Ozzy Andrews alcohol ink markers on sale. You should know next week, National Scrapbooking Day, we will have the next 10 colors, or 12 colors, I think, of his markers. So we'll have a worldwide launch on them, the next 12 colors of his alcohol ink markers, and we'll have it on an I Want It All next week. It's still $1.99. They're not going to be any less in price. I can't do any less than a buck ninety-nine, but we'll have the next 10 or 12 colors. Okay, so for this week, um, I already showed you in the beginning the storyboards and the dies. So I already showed you, and now you've seen them. I used all six dies, amazingly enough. <laughs> so these are simply defined. This is the Home of the Free collection. It is limited, it is exclusive, and when it is gone, it is gone. And yes, it is as patriotic as I could get. And I'm proud to, I'm proud of it. <laughs> All right, you guys, so that's on sale. Then the opulent paper. This one is so pretty. Then the opulent paper. So we have two sets for you. Both of them are on a bundle package. So I put the mystical and the festive together because they're the specialty papers. I mean, the colors are pretty. Now we, we are the only, I mean, this is sold out. We bought it all. So in this, you're going to get uh, six different colors and there's 10 sheets of each. So 60 colors in this pack. And this is the festive. And in this one, we used the white shimmer and we used the white glitter and we used the red shimmer. You also get a green shimmer and a, I mean, lots of stuff in this one. 
Then in the mystical, we used the holographic iridescent colors. And we colored this in the red and the blue in the very beginning. You get both of these on a value price and we're including in the silver glitter, uh, the biodegradable silver glitter to go with these. They are on a Holy Smokes Artichokes price for the three. I mean, amazing bundle value. So that's bundle number one from Sizzix, or it could be bundle number two, I'm not 100% sure. The next bundle I have for you, again, at an incredible value. I mean, an incredible value. I've got the ivory. We used the glitter. We used the high gloss, which is the mirror. We used that in the, the first thing we did with the I Pledge Allegiance. And we used the pearlized shimmer out of this one. So we used three papers out of this one. And then the charcoal. And I think we used two papers out of, we used the shimmer and we used the mirror out of this. And in these packs, you get 50 sheets, 10 sheets each, 50 sheets, 10 sheets each. The mystical is 50 sheets, 10 sheets each. The festive is 60 sheets, 10 sheets each. And the value to go with this is all of the sparkly bling. So these are all their sequins and beads in there. They're 4th of July iridescent holographic. They're just beautiful. So there's no color to them. So you can, I mean, they're just in holographic. You can use them for everything, but we've got a bundle price on this set as well. We will sell the paper open stock, but your value is definitely going to be in the bundle. So the only things in the YouTube yummies will be Ozzy Andrews alcohol markers, all 108 colors. The next colors come next week. My dies and the Sizzix paper. There'll be some adhesive and some sticky dots, but that's it. Other than that, if you order anything else out of that category, uh, from other categories, um, or you choose to do a pay later and don't pay for your order by the next Friday, the following Friday, your order won't be expedited. All right, and we can't do an expedited order all the time. It just so happens we didn't have one on Friday, so we can do one this week, and I have the dies and everything here. This is Doris, and I know I'm supposed to open this one. So this is Doris. Let's get to samples. Beautiful, right? So here you've got the fireworks going on. She camoed. See, she colored him right on in. I think her husband, I don't remember. No, maybe he wasn't. I, You know, I don't remember, Doris. Hmm. I don't know. It's a great card, though. And look at this is this darling she colored oh my gosh she colored in all the little look at how cute are they oh what a great job wow love the mary janes <laughs> that makes my heart happy happy birthday america that's beautiful here we've got a pledge of allegiance and i'm supposed to open this one so uh, the Pledge of Allegiance. Happy birthday, America. Really cute. These are darling Doris. And Home of the Free. Uh-oh. There's nothing in there. Did I lose it? Well, I opened it. Home of the Free. I... It, maybe it said, and the brave inside. Hmm. It wasn't me honest. <laughs> okay, that was Doris. Then we have Belinda. And we've got a Pledge of Allegiance from Belinda. And it really can be just that simple. And look at Belinda's eagle. Oh, that's beautiful. 
And look at Belinda's fireworks with the pop and the boom. <laughs> oh, look at, I love that. That's, see, there's using that holographic paper from Opulent Mystic, uh, Mystical. Look at that. And here we have God Bless America. And then the negative. So here she did the positive. Okay, so here you've got it reversed. So here's red on blue. Here's blue on red. <laughs> she wanted to give you options. That's Belinda. Then we go to Sharon. Oh, it was so good to see Sharon. Hopefully Sharon will be able to do some more cards for us. She's on the design team and she... Well, so hopefully she'll be back with us working uh, and doing cards for us at uh, the design team again soon. She popped by and sat down for, for a little bit to come visit. I would have sworn there was one more from Sharon. I'm going to have to find, oh, wait. Yeah, that's Sharon, right? Sharon, Sharon. I swear there's one more from Sharon. I'm going to have to find it. Maybe there isn't. Maybe there's only two. So cute. And then we have Elena. So Elena had this acetate that had the words over the top of it. And I do know Elena's husband was a serve, was served for, for our country. So this is Elena. And here she's slightly offset, so it created a shadow. So smart. And here we, again, we have uh, acetate that has printed words on it, military. Um, so maybe what the word free freedom means. And then she's got in God we trust. Happy 4th of July. America the Beautiful. And then we have James. And James gave us God Bless America. And Home of the Free and the Brave. And then we have Claire. So we have our little silhouette kids marching along with the American flag. But then we have the same silhouette kids marching along with fireworks. These are Claire, and here's Claire's, oh, it's beautiful, it really is just so beautiful. I mean, that's beautiful. And then Claire did her fireworks, and I'm supposed to open it, okay. So we've got fireworks bursting, and happy birthday America. And then we've got God Bless America and the Pledge of Allegiance. And we have our rose frame with our flag. And then we open it, Home of the Free and the Brave. So America, Home of the Free and the Brave. And then we have our soldier, and she colored him in too. Remember our veterans? Yes, yes we should absolutely remember our veterans. And then we have God Bless America. Look at how pretty is that. 
And then last but not least, I have a couple layouts. So we've got the kids marching down. We've got our eagle going up. She's got the kids marching all the way across. So here's our first 4th of July or patriotic layout. They're so cute, aren't they? And then the last one I have is from Elena. Oh, is that, oh, I have another card from Elena. Well, okay, layout first and then the card. <laughs> so I've got the kids walking on by. I've got the Pledge of Allegiance. So two completely different layouts. One very vintage and, and very distressed and one very happy and, and, and fireworks popping. And then Elena's last card with the fireworks behind. All right, you guys, it's me. It's Stacy. I know it was a long class, but that's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I hope you learned something today. I hope you saw something that sparked your creativity or your, your mind going, hmm. I hope you maybe think of a way to take what I've done one step further. And I definitely hope that you see that everything I did was achievable by everybody. I used paper, I used dyes, I used markers. That was it. There was no special sauce anywhere in there. The special sauce is you. <laughs> it's you. So take what I've shown you and adapt it to your projects and your cards and your scrapbooks and your mixed media. Take the techniques and expand upon them. Now, remember what I said, we'll expedite these orders if you follow the, the few simple terms and conditions and you have to order only what's in the YouTube Yummies category, that's it nothing else on your order and your order has to be paid by the following Friday by next Friday you're watching this on a Saturday so I have to have your order by the following Friday which I think is the 6th maybe May 6th I think could be so if I'm wrong then I'm wrong but in fact you know what because then I'm gonna have somebody say well I heard her say May 6th and may I, I probably I did um, calendar calendar uh, May I was right. Have to have your order in by May 6th. <laughs> and then we will begin to, we'll try and start shipping on May 9th. <laughs> Only the orders that fit that, that qualification. So it's me, Stacy, Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com. That's where you're going to find all of these great products. The dyes you're only going to find with us. You might be able to find Ozzy Andrews alcohol markers for $1.99 in a few places. If you do and you want to go local and shop your local independent retailer, great. The opulent paper, boy, we've got it on such a deal. But again, if you have the opportunity to shop at an independent local retailer, great. Go for it. If not, see us at scrapbookingmadesimple.com. I will see you all next week, which is National Scrapbooking Day. And oh, do I have products for you. I have got doorbusters that are wahoo-ka-choo. Bye, everybody.